Yeah, you're on. <laughs> G'day, how you going? We're back here again today and uh, we're on the HK HT HG mudguards, front mudguards, doing the rust repair. Uh, this is to follow the video from the other day of actually removing the guards off the car. Come off the Monaro over there and uh, now we're at this stage. So, like I said, we drilled the holes out for the wheel arch here so that the inner skirt can come out. That's got to come out so that you can get access to the junk that's underneath. Um, we did that the other day, so I'm just going to release it here now. Out it comes. So this rust section will get replaced with the rare spares part. One goes in there, so that'll get progress after this section's done. That's all good. Alrighty, so we've got the rust section in here and you can see where the old repair was. They've actually laid a bit of steel over on the outside. You can see the heat mark from the weld. And as you can tell, layers and layers and layers. And the more you layer, the more you get corrosion. So we don't do that. It's not good. Anyway, um, the other rare spare part that goes into this is this little section here. As you can see, it's corroded out down there. So that'll be this piece here, and that's got to go in there. So I'm just going to show you how to pull that little section out. First of all, you've got spot welds. So there's one there, one there, one there. You use one of these wheels. Use a wire wheel just to clean this up so you can see where the spot welds are. You need to clean across there because there's four spot welds in here. And you need to clean across this edge here because of the spot welds there. I've already drilled those ones out, so that's released from that side. I'm just going to show you how to drill them. I've got two left here, that one there and this one here. It's a pilot drill first hole. So we use the small drill first. That helps you to centre the, the uh, spot weld so you get the drill to run in the right place. There's another one here, so I'll do that while we're watching. And then I'll do the bigger drill to show you how it comes apart. You don't drill all the way through, you just drill the first section of steel. You only want that first edge. If you go all the way through, you're damaging stuff that you might need at a later date. We just drilled the first section of steel. So now we're going to use the big one to hollow that out. It's a, it's a kind of flat angled type drill. You don't want it to be too sharp of angle, otherwise it drills through too quick. You just want to take the metal from the top. <clears throat> okay, we'll do this one first. Stop start is a help as well. Take your time with it, pull the drill off and have a look and you can actually see whether or not you first, through the first section of metal, there's actually a line at the bottom. We need a little bit more on this one. So that's getting close now. See, you can see that bottom edge. You can see in the bottom of that you can see the, the second part of the steel starting to, to separate from the first part. That's as far as you need to go. And I'll show you in a minute when it comes apart. Okay, we'll drill this one a bit more. As you can see again, you can see the line. That should be ready to come apart, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, we'll give it a touch with a chisel and a hammer. See that? Easy as that, separated. Now I wanted to show you, I've got this little tool I made up, and this is a little um, kid's claw hammer from Bunnings or wherever you want to buy them from. And I've trimmed it, taken the head off the top of it, but I've still got a head where I can actually hit it. And this edge goes up underneath the edge of the panel, like that. And that helps me to get it apart. 
because it's very difficult to get underneath that edge with anything else. It's got the right angle. There's your spot weld. You can also use it without the hammer and just use it to pry like that. You can see it coming away. Okay, and we've got that separated there and you can actually see that this is starting to move out of where it's supposed to be anyway. It's all nice and loose. And we have to cut this section out. Okay, normally you'd think, well, why don't you just cut it back to there and only use what you need to replace. But I've got to get this out of the way. So when we do the outside section first, and we always do the outside section first, I still have access to that weld that runs across there to planish it and dress it so that it comes to a nice even finish. So there's less filler going the outside when it's done. So I'm going to cut this through with a hacksaw. to do with my hacks over it. There it is. On the walk around there. <clears throat> oh, that's what I forgot to mention. Spare tyre. An old tyre. You don't, you don't want the rim on the inside. You just want an old tyre. It's ideal for hanging on to guards when you're working on them upside down like this. The shape of the guard fits in the hollow a little bit. And what I do is I just grab my seat clamps like that. And I can adjust them up. Don't put a lot of pressure on them, just enough to stabilise it. It's just another pair of hands. <clears throat> Makes life a bit easier. Stops it from falling off the bench when you're trying to get the uh, spot welds out with the hammer and everything. Okay, now we're going to cut this section through here. So again, we're cutting it high so that our line for the weld through on the outside panel has plenty of access and I can use the hammer and dolly to dress it up. Then we put it all back together. So the way we cut this is with the hacksaw straight through here with this line. So that's nearly there. So what you're doing here is you're actually cutting through this edge because it doesn't matter because you, we weld that up once it gets going again. But you need to actually cut through there to get the depth in this to make it come away. A little bit more. And why would you use a hacksaw, not a grinder? Well, a, gr a hacksaw blade only takes uh, 16 thou. A grinder takes a millimetre. And that will change the aspect of how this fits in. Okay, you've got extra metal there and you can make it match up. But the, the hacksaw is just so much more accurate. When you're running through there with a grind, you can end up running through the outside panel of the guard. Right. Then you've got to weld it all back together again. Okay. <coughs> there we go. All right, so we haven't cut through the guard at all. You can see on the other side that there's no, no um, cut at all. It's all still solid. You only want to cut through down to where the edge is so that you can cut through the panel and get it out of the way. So that comes out of there. The new one will go into there like that, back underneath the edge when it gets folded. So now we've got a clear way to do the rare spares panel for the outside. 
Oh, and I've got the wrong one. Just give me two seconds. Stuff that up again. What did I say? Oh, that was easy. We'll get the right one on this set. <laughs> Bucket it up anyway. So there she is. That panel is going to go on the outside and fill that. Just let me turn it over so you can see clearly how it's going to go. Well that's the other thing we've done. Um, we want to limit the repairs as far as paint is concerned. So we're staying below these lines. So we protect it with uh, the, uh, it's like line tape. It's a special tape that doesn't have a real maximum adhesion. And uh, that keeps it safe to a degree while we do all these repairs. Because you're chucking it around all over the place. You want to have something to stop the paint from getting damaged. So where the repairs aren't necessary. Okay. corrosion falling out of it already so we're going to cut through here now that's the, the main swage line just below the flutes the flutes are sitting there this is our main swage line rare spares are very generous with their panel size so they've got it so that it covers the whole area it comes all the way up here you don't want to be cutting up here through the flutes all right that goes without saying we need to cut below this line because that line there actually helps to stop the distortion from getting up into the flutes. So we cut in about this section here. So we're going to be running the running the grinder through there just to take that off in one, one foul sweep. Let's get a straight edge. We can use this one. I like to take just the basic rubbish off you don't have to worry about what's going on there because we have the section between there and there to do with so our actual, our actual weld will be somewhere around about that point there okay so um, my mate and I went to Harbour Freight the other day Took us 14 hours to fly there, and we picked up a um, panel rotisserie, and this is it. We've unboxed it. You don't want to see us pulling it out of the box and throwing the plastic away. So here it is. Anyway, I'll show you how it goes together. It's got the face plate, which goes bolts on top here. Oh, by the way, I'm bullshitting. We made it up. <laughs> We made it out of scrap. This first part of scrap, because you probably want to do one for yourself, is the base of a bench stand-up drill. Same as that one, similar to that one over there on the bench. You know, you've got the rotating table on the on the drill base, and you've got the locker there, so that that allows it to rotate, and we can rotate this way as well. So that was just off a drill that was buggered and you know, instead of throwing it in the tip, that's what we use. So that goes like that, it's bolted on with one bolt there. Got two bolts to go into this section here. Bolt and wash it in. You tighten these with a spanner, but I'm not going to do that just at the moment. This is for demonstration purposes for the video. Okay, that's our stabiliser, and this is how the guard sits on. So 
if you could just hold that there for us old mate for a little while. Mm -hmm. Just give me two seconds to find some butt. some holes in where the tape is so I can get the bulbs in. One back here somewhere. And I just made it so that you can fit um, quite simply half inch bolts, same bolts that hold the guard on the car. Got the big mud washer on the top. One there, one down here to stabilise it while I do the rest of them. Cracking day today, mate, isn't it? Beautiful. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Great day to be doing a guard. 26 degrees in the shed. Working on the lads Monaro. Notice I said Monaro. You say Monero. Instead of Monero. I've lost my southern accent. <laughs> That's what the council area was called down south where they got the name from when that design guy was travelling through Eden Monaro down through uh, um, Candovelin into Cooma and all those areas and it's called Eden Monaro. Monero. And because I was down there from that way originally I say Monero. <laughs> Man I apologise. Monero, Monaro. Monaro, it's a Monaro. <laughs> and I do agree, it's a Monaro. Like a Kamara. Well, we've got these bolts to go through here. And they, uh, they help to fix it on the inside because you need as much stability as you can get. That's one. There's another one. 